For tuning in to my channel today i come to you with a new project something that i've been wanting to do it's been on the list for a while and i'm finally getting to it so here it is it's going to be a punch needle rug and you know without further ado i'm just going to jump right into it so here i have this monk's cloth on a tufting frame um i will post a picture of the tufting frame at the end of the video and um also where I got it from now really really quick I'm using this bigger tufting frame um, because it's easy it's easier for this uh, video however I did make a smaller one using a um, old mirror frame and I just took the mirror out and I put these nails I put these nails on around it and it it works just like carpet tacks and then i'll also go back in with my staple gun and staple it down to make it even more tighter so this is something that you can do um it's cost efficient and also um you don't always need to use the bigger frame when you're making smaller rugs because you don't want to use all your material up in um wasted pretty much is what i was trying to say got lost in my train of thought but anyway i also went to the um thrift store and i found a a big picture frame a nice size picture frame it's probably about maybe 10 inches bigger than the than the frame that i just showed you that i made and so i could have another size um obviously and I did the same thing. I took the the um, uh, picture out and took the piece of, it was plexiglass that I found. I took the plexiglass out and I did the same thing. Works just as good. My next thing is I'm going to actually make my own um, six foot frame and I'm going to post a video on that one. But anyway, so now let's get into this thing here. Now, what I did for this image is I used my projector. And this projector connects with the HDMI cord or um, a, um, AV cord. That's the um, auxiliary cord or uh, the um, USB. And then obviously you have your plug that you have to plug into the socket in order for this thing to turn on. But this just makes the images bigger. And um, so you can put them on your monk's cloth without a problem. So I will also do a video on that from start to finish. But right now, this is good enough. So Sharpie. Punch needle. I like to use this punch needle, but I have my extra because I'm going to be good with multiple colors. Here's my threader, and obviously some scissors. And yes, now I do have a uh, tufting gun. And I did do a little small video on that, but I didn't really show like from start to finish on that as well. So um, this is almost start to finish minus the um, projector part, but I will um, do a video on that too. But what I was going to say about that is my tufting gun, I do have the capabilities of doing this method with the gun but I will have to switch out my blades. And I, for real, I like to use this method. Now, there's, and then with the with the um, cut pal, this makes um, loop pal, the um, punch needle makes loop, loop pal. And the other method is called cut pal. And that's what I use my tufting gun for, but there's too much that goes with that. Um, once you're done, you gotta shave it down and I, I, uh, 
too much. So I only I only do that when I'm in the mood. But all right, so now let's get into this thing here. So I'm going to start with the smallest part. Which smallest parts, which would be these two circles, um, which are, are in white. Um, you could label your colors, like this is going to be black, this is going to be pink. Make sure it's a pink, pink, black, pink. This is black. That's white. It's too small to put white. This is pink. This is brown. Pink. Pink. Brown. Brown. Pink. Pink. Yeah. Pink and pink. Yeah, and pink. Yeah, I normally don't label because I know already but for this video I will okay so get our thread and this thread here is just some extra thread that I'm going to be using but it is a four ply which is medium so and this is how we thread it Go. This is your this is your back. And this is the front. So I'm kind of glad I got both. Because I can show you this way. This is the back. And this is the front. The back has a line. Group. You can see right through it. That's how you know it's the back. Plus, it's slanted up. All right, so we put that down. You take your threader and you go through the back of this hole. And do it again. There's a hole. I'm going to feed it right through the hole. Just like so. I think I call this thread your yarn. Put it through. Feed it through. Just like so. And then we're going to go through the front now. Take your thread, go through the hole. Take your and then your yarn, feed it through, and pull. And this is what you got. This here is going to go right inside that groove. Okay. Now I'm going to move you up closer. What you do, make sure you have some slack. Also, make sure you have long sleeves or some type of cushion because these uh, carpet tacks they hurt. All right, and what we're going to do is we're going to push in all the way in to the base and you have to make sure let's do this again make sure the thread I'm sorry make yeah make sure the thread is behind you and this open part is going the direction you're going if that makes sense let me see. so we'll do that now there's a huge hole in here the good thing about this monk cloth is it goes right back 
So, do it again. Punch in, pull out. Don't pull all the way out like that. Because if you pull all the way out like that, it's pull. It's going to pull out. Punch, pull out. Just maybe, just enough so the point is touching the uh, monk's cloth. And then punch back down again. Pull up. Now I'm following my line. Now I want to, I'm going in a circle. So I want to turn my punch needle. I was, I want to turn my punch needle. So I'm going in that direction as the line. Right, so now I want to turn again. And I want to turn again. Make sure, you see how this is tangled, like trying to go in a circle? Turn it. Make sure it's behind. And I'm going to do it again. So, Turn, turn, make sure that's behind, turn, that out. So I'm gonna, do it, I'm gonna do this bottom circle. Once I get on this bigger, um, bigger surface, I'll be able to show you a little bit. So, one, now I want to count. When you have a little small space, like this circle is way smaller than that one. So obviously I, I don't want to do as many as I did here on here. So I'm going to count. So that's one, two, three, four, and that's enough. We'll show you the other side shortly. Same thing over here. I'm gonna just knock this one out. Sorry, I'm a lefty. So I'm trying to stay off the camera as much as I can. It's hard. It's just like getting Ink, ink on the side of your thing, on the side of your hand. Alright. One, two, three. Four. Okay. So Do, I'm gonna do a bigger spot. Let me um, do the bug. This yarn is big twist. I actually like to use red heart, but for real, for real, I use any kind of yarn that's good. And then I have used this before, so I'm pleased with it. And it was on sale for $2.99 at um, Joanne's Fabric, so I had to hop on it. And the color is magenta. Yeah, magenta. Okay. So let me see here. Alright, y'all. So let me thread this up again. We forgot. Back of the hole. Feed it through. Take it through the front hole. Feed it through. Okay. Now, let's do a bigger surface. Let's go. Let's go here. 
I actually like to outline first. Yeah, let me outline. Cause when I when you outline it, you get the lines look so much better when you're doing the um cut pile. I mean loop pile. And I'll show you the difference. And look. So let's outline it first. Okay. So. Keep forgetting y'all. So we're gonna push in. Come out. Let me bring y'all a little closer. See the hole? See how big the hole is? It's gone. Okay, so see what it looks like. Yarns behind. Punch in. All the way in. Bring up to about where the point is touching the uh, monk's claw and push back down. Pull back up same thing and you only want to go up like maybe a half a centimeter literally literally I'm go slow for the video but I'll speed it up a little bit more and technically I shouldn't be on the side like this but I'm trying I should be like the punch needle should be the punch needle should be standing straight up but I'm a lefty and my hands in the way alright so now here's the when we turn let's make sure we got enough slack and you turn, see? So now, it's just like this. The thread is coming out this way, out that hole. And this open air is pointing frontwards. And we keep punching the direction we want to go. Making sure the thread, I keep saying thread, the yarn is always behind, trailing. Otherwise, it won't work. It'll be real hard for you. trying to stay out the camera so you can see now when I'm working with the with the gun you can't use the gun with the uh, frame laying down it has to be standing up turn now I'm gonna flip this so the yarn is always in the back. I am not right-handed, y'all. This, this is gonna be hard to try. Ooh, this little four. I think next time I'm gonna have to set my camera up on the right side. Duh. This is 
punch needle. One more, one more breath. I'm gonna fill in the patch and then I'll turn it around so you all can see what it looks like. probably should lift this up a little higher because it's hitting my table. This rug should take from if I do it non-stop should take like five hours to complete. And I'm gonna continue to do all the rest of these and, and outline it in black. Just pick up speed. It's so therapeutic and so easy to do. never used my tufting gun with this punch not um I can't say punch needle but um root pal method so I only use it like I said earlier I only use it with um when I'm using the other method because I've never when you buy the gun it comes with the uh cut pal already um, in it, so I never change it. I don't want to mess up no measurements. Plus, this is the first method that I learned before I got the gun was this punch needle. And I got myself comfortable doing the rugs with this punch needle first before I even opened up my gun and start using it, my tufting gun and start using it. It's really easy, really, really easy to do, and if you do it non-stop, you can, you can get this done, like I said, in four hours, maybe less. Maybe three. The cleanup afterwards is so much easier. I don't require cutting much. When I'm using the other method, I have to, um, I gotta uh, use the clippers and, ugh, it's a mess. If your lines aren't straight, that's fine because when you draw them, because um, you can always just make your clean lines when you start using the punch needle. It doesn't matter because all of them is going to be covered up anyway at the end. Look at this. It's the speed for me. Here's something, here's something you need to know. If it gets snagged, if it gets, if you're holding on to it, and you don't have any slack, this is what's gonna happen. 
nothing. Nothing. So that's why you need to make sure you have the slack. Or you're gonna be thinking you punch needle in, or you can have the slack. You can you can have the slack and then you've been and then you end up being so it's like this long. You punch, 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 punch. And then you end up lifting up at enough time and you still got enough slack. But then you put your hand down and then there's no slack. So then it'll be punch. Let me do an example. Punch, punch, punch. No slack. Punch, punch, punch. So now you got this. And that's what I was just trying to explain. So you need to make sure at all times you have slack and you're not leaning on it or it's not getting caught on your carpet tax or anything. As you punch and then you get more yarn in there, the rug will start in starting. The rug will start to tighten up. It'll feel loose at first, but then it'll start to tighten up because <clears throat> you got more yarn in there. But you'll see, uh oh, I didn't finish that. But you see the process as you go along. I really don't like to turn it over until I have something complete because you don't see anything. And you're like, oh, that was my downfall when I first started. I'd be like getting real discouraged. Like, oh my goodness, I don't even see anything. So I stopped turning it over until I got like something complete all the way and I could see. Then you could tell if your um, density is, is accurate throughout the whole patch and how you know you've got the right density is if you're picking your punch needle up and picking your punch needle up and using the same or about the same lengths in between your punches. If you got some short ones, then you got some long one, or not that long, because obviously we just seen if it's that long, it's gonna look, it's not gonna work. But you got some, let me do an example, because I'm, I keep trying to use my fingers. So, we got some, so say if I decide to go all the way up here, and then I do one, that's not gonna be good. See, it's lifting. Could you see it's lifting? You can see it's lifting. So, with that being said, let me turn the light up. With that being said, when you turn this over, it's not going to have, it's going to be a hollow part right here because there's nothing punched there. I know that makes sense to y'all. But I think I'm gonna take a piece of monk's cloth and do a video and show y'all different the different um, things that I'm talking about and the do's and the don'ts. So you know, cause it's a pain in the butt when you get done and you turn it over and then you got dense spots and, and you already sealed the back with the glue and everything and you can't go back. Once you put that glue on the back and it's hard, you can't punch back through it. Trust me, I tried it. It was a fail. It was a whole fail. But I'ma finish up this outlining of this bow and I'ma turn it over so you all can see it. So I'll be back. Alright, y'all, I am back. Um, I did say I was going to come back after I did the uh, the bow, but after I seen how much time that I took, it was already like already 
30 minutes in and I really didn't want an hour plus video on this. So I just took the liberty and went on ahead and finished it. Here is the finished product. This will be the back portion of it. Um, I'll flip it over so you can see the front and how I clean it up. Um, I said it would take five hours to uh, complete this rug and then I went back and said four hours or three to four hours. So let me um, explain. Five hours straight through to do the whole entire parameter outside of this image um, during the punch needle method will take about five hours. Okay, y'all, here's the front of it. And I'm gonna show you how I clean it up. Like, there's some long pieces in here. You probably can't see it. But there's some pieces that's sticking up that I cut off. Let's snip them bad boys off. Don't pull them. Normally I would do this after I seal up the back. But again, this is for the tutorial purposes. Doesn't matter because it'll blend right on in with the other. The other uh, Her lips, I'll probably go back in and take that black line out so it's just all red because I don't like that. But I just take, I'll, I'll use, I'll use any of these scissors. And like where it bleeds, let me see. Like, I'm trying to look in the camera upside down. Down here, like this right here. I'm just gonna move that right move the pink sometimes when you punch it it might loop together see and you just move it back to its spot see this that's the eyebrow I, I'll go back in and probably do another line over this eyebrow so it stands out more but don't think your your yarn is not there because you know it's there because you punched it on the other side you just gotta clean it up now, the other method, the other method, the cut pile method, oh my goodness, it is getting those lines straight, cutting, and, oh, it's a mess. I like, although I do like how clean it comes out when you're done, but I like this too because it's still cute and it's plush and it's comfortable for the babies to lay on. Yep, I'm just moving, trying to get the eye together. Remember those two, those two circles, white circles that I started out with. I just try to clean those up. I'll put the scissors down and look for the scissors. This is it. But again, you would do this process after the back is already sealed and dry. So that way you're not pulling the yarn back out. But I kinda, I kinda know the tension I should use since I've been doing it for a little bit. Yeah, those little creases for the bow. Move that pink. Move the 
get the black in alignment with the line. And then the, the back of it, as you already saw, looks so precise. Some, I've seen people actually keep it on the back. I don't like it on the back. Because you could just still see. Well, if, I, if you do it like real perfect and you can't tell, then that's something different. But it's starting to clean up. I got a little bit more to go. But you get the gist of it. As far as that's concerned. Just the clean up. And again, I'm going to repeat this again. You will do this process after you seal the back. And I seal my back. Y'all yeah, go back in and put some more black in this nose. change these lips to take that black out the middle and just make it all uh, uh, red and red. Okay, see. Looks really nice.